Well, I want to give you, in conclusion, five questions I jotted down just for an application of this point of don't neglect your soul. And you can take them home or maybe just think of them. Number one is, ask yourself, take a look at your soul. I want to challenge each of us to do that. Are you looking at your soul and say, who am I trying to please? Now you think about it. Who are you really trying to please? Are you trying to please God? Are you trying to please somebody else or yourself? Now, there's nothing wrong with pleasing others, mind you. But here's the deal. We got we to gotta know that if we neglect the soul, we get the order reversed. So if we're pleasing God, what's going to happen is we're going to be pleasing others too. And if you try to turn it around, it's going to be a mess, Okay. So, so who are you trying to please? And the psalmist said in Psalm 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul. You hear me? Praise the Lord with your soul. That's what it's for. Second question, what needs am I trying to meet? What needs am I trying to meet? See, I was taking my wife for lunch, I thought. But, but when I got interrupted, I forgot all about the soul part because what I really was trying to do is please myself. I wanted my wife to say, oh, really, you're just a good husband. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't admit that. And she might be listening, I don't know, but I don't know. But, but you really get honest with yourself. Who... who what needs are you trying to, to meet? I'm telling you what Jesus did. I can tell you Jesus living out of soul because he was on the cross. He said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. Jesus put the conviction in the deep soul of his disciples in Matthew 18 when he tells us about a man that, that forgive much. And the man that was forgiven much wouldn't forgive a man that owed him a little bit. See? I'm talking about that's what this conviction does. That's soul. That's building below the level of what people can see. See? So, so your, your needs. Don't blame God. I mean, I mean, this is God's soul. This is God's work. He's doing it. And then thirdly, with whom am I competing? You know, when you live in a competitive world, and that's how we've kind of, that's the worldview of society in this culture. But what it amounts to is soul neglect. Because what happens when we're competing, you know, the Bible says when we compare ourselves among ourselves, we're not very wise. If you've got to compete, you know, you're going to have tendency for envy and jealousy. And it doesn't mean you don't do the best you can do. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is your life is about competing. It's about a rivalry. It's about getting better. So what happens, you get so involved in the world and trying to get your kids or get your family or get this, that, and the other, your vocation or occupation just right, that, that you neglect your soul. Whereas if we point our focus on God and his soul-cleansing work and the strength we have, we'll end up doing better at everything and having more peace and joy about it in every way. And then fourthly, what rewards are we seeking, really? I mean, are we willing to serve God with His blessings? Are we willing to take God in His face value whether He blesses us or not? Whether we have anything in the stall or not? If all our crops fail, all the churches close, and we don't get a good report from the doctor, what is that going to do to you? Do you expect, let me say it this way, do you expect if you live right and you do everything that God says to the best of your ability that your marriage is just going to be fine 
and your children are going to turn out all just right, and you'll never have any problems, hey, then we're living for a reward. Now, we won't admit that, but when we lose those things, it happens, and we feel that way. And then lastly, I wanted to think about this. What guilt or sin are we trying to hide? Now, I believe I'm talking the best people that I know right here and that are listening. But I'm going to tell you, you you get serious with your soul regarding sin. Because, Because every Christian is after having a clean soul. That means that's what God has given you. And that's what conviction and guilt is about. Now, you go to Jesus with that. And I believe that, that the greatest negligence of the soul in the world for me and for you and for all Christians, is the fact that we have a misunderstanding of repentance. We've got to understand repentance is an ongoing conversion experience. And so maybe the Lord bless us to look at ourselves, see that, and go to Him. It's all that matter. You don't have to go to anybody else. You don't have to go to your preacher or your priest or you go to Jesus. He's the one that cleanses your soul. He's bought it, he's paid for it, he's redeemed it. Well, may the Lord bless you. And I pray that God has used my little words to make us think, I don't want to neglect my soul any longer. And I pray that God will bless you to be rejoicing in that and be thankful that he's given you the soul that goes after God, that hungers and thirsts after righteousness, as it does. So live out your soul, eat the bread of life, Lose your life to find your soul. Would you bow with me? We thank you, Heavenly Father, for redeeming our souls. The part of us, Lord, that will live somewhere forever. Oh, God, give us a greater impression of the reality of what that really means. We thank you so much, Lord, for the people, many of whom in this congregation that have lived so long out of the soul, that even this pandemic doesn't seem to shake them. So many, Lord, that can't be here, that couldn't be here even if the church doors were wide open, are so strong, so vibrant, that love you so much, that we always learn something from when we get around them. Thank you for them. Thank you, Lord, for the redeeming of our souls. And thank you, God, for not letting us get so far away from you. Remind us, O God, often of the importance of settling down before you and considering the great preciousness of the treasure that was purchased by your precious blood, the soul. Thank you, God. Go with us now and bless us for Christ's sake. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We thank you for being here today. May the Lord bless you too.